spread the fire. Welcome back to SMWX. I'm extremely excited because I'm joined by, I think, <laughs> I think I'm joined by the best political reporter in the country, Samkele Maseko of ENCA. Bob, thanks so much for joining us on SMWX. Thank you very, thank you very much, my brother. Yeah, yeah, Congratulations yeah. on the product. Thank you Loving so much. Loving it, you're doing well for yourself. Keep it up. I really young appreciate blood, it. Young blood, young things for young people, yeah. for themselves. No doubt, no doubt. Well, we learn from you, bro. We learn from you. Well, we follow people like you in the New York <laughs> domain who have been making it, who have been making waves. For sure. Despite whatever everybody was saying, yeah. you made it for yourself. You defined yourself outside the broader context of sure. your father. You are your sure. own man, your own brand, sure. separate from anybody else. And you should not be taken under anybody's shadow, be under anybody's cloud, but yourself. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Bro, we were hit with a bombshell this morning. Uh, the deputy president deciding not to take his seat in parliament. How do you read what this means for South African politics right now? A very different narrative. Many mm. people may not perceive it. A president and a deputy president mm. will always lock horns mm. once they're in power. Mm. I think this is the power contestation between Mabuza mm. and Cyril Ramaphosa. Cyril Ramaphosa has been perceived as the main man of the ANC. The deputy president has been there. Mm. Not, not anybody bothered with him. Mm. He's perceived, he probably perceives himself mm. as a burden onto the incumbent president, doesn't feel valued, isn't given any uh, responsibilities mm. apart from just going to address the few rallies here in the country and few government things. But the show, the main man of the show is Cyril Ramaphosa mm. and he feels as if he needs a stake in this broader governance structure. For instance, he may have even told the ANC NEC that I'm not con consulted on anything, mm. I'm not told anything. I first find out in a, in a special NEC meeting mm. of the reconfiguration of cabinet. I'm told then of how many ministers and deputy ministers will be cut. Mm. I'm not chairing SOEs, which is the function of a deputy president. Sure. The president himself has taken the responsibility of SOEs to his own office, basically did what Jacob Zuma did to him. Mm. Mm. So you feel like, you see, because I was quite skeptical about this narrative that Ramaphosa is going to get tough. Um, I thought there's no way that this ANC, divided as it is, could could find a way to actually send a strong message. But I must say, I was quite surprised uh, when I saw that. And I don't know if you think this this means that we can expect quite a shift when Ramaphosa announces his cabinet, um, say Sunday, Monday. I think there'll be a drastic shift. Hmm. There'll be less deputy ministers. Hmm probably about 25, 26 ministers, but the deputy ministers is his target and he's going to chop them like no one else's business. Mm. So he's basically trimming off the patronage, trimming right. off uh, more government departments, which had been more expenditure for the government. The salary bill of, of, of public mm. officials mm. would go down. The salary bill of uh, members who are employees of mm. these ministers for their mm. five-year term of offices. So it basically tells you that he's a man on a mission, but at the cost. Yeah of his own support within right. the ANC and he is playing a gambling tactic mm. with his presidency. I wouldn't be surprised if his own internal cabal or internal faction in the ANC says, look, with you may feel as if Mabuza is a burden onto you, but you definitely need him by your side. Mm. Because if he's full time at Lutuli House, he mm. will do to you what Jacob Zuma did to Tabumbi. Can you only imagine? I mean, when we think back to Nazrek and, and the crucial role that Mabuza played, in Ramaphosa's ascension, it seems interesting now that he's taking this step back. And, and that's the question I wanted to ask you. If Ramaphosa takes decisive steps, trims the cabinet, that may create a coalition of the wounded that actually undermines that work in the long term. Um, yeah, are you, are you seeing that President Ramaphosa will be able to steady the ship or do you think we're still in for a lot of um, contestation ahead? History has a funny way of repeating itself. 2007, Pulukwane was a build-up and a culmination mm. and a collaboration of the wounded. You, those who were wounded and particularly were not in favourable to the 1996 class project of former President Tawumpi, they came together, they backed one horse, Jacob Zuma. This time around, it's very difficult to have a coalition of the wounded because the others may feel betrayed of the one who may be on the foreside now, who may be sitting in the middle, that would be David Mabuza. Sure. Also, what are the political interests of David Mabuza mm. and the Treasury General? They are very close. This narrative that the ANC top six is 2-2, mm. Gwede Mantashe wouldn't come out and dismiss it as he did and say, no, no, there's no 2-2 where top six where a collective. Mm. It means those rumors are spreading. And once rumors spread, mm. it becomes part of the machinations mm. and the machinery mm. of the branches of the regions and of the provinces. Mm. So this rumor of Mabuza not being able to come back or not wanting to come back as deputy president mm. started about three months ago. What has happened today? Mm. He's not being sown in as a, a member of parliament. Yeah. With the smoke is fire. 
So I want to change tack and just ask you about your, your, your style, how you do what you do, your, your viral questions on Twitter. <laughs> I'm actually glad because now I, I can ask you, are you a liability or an asset? That's I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, just like, how do you prepare? How do you, how do you build the kind of knowledge of South Africa's political landscape? You know, I think a lot of people see you, they're like, wow, Samkele really understands the dynamics. Um, how do you go about your preparation and, and doing what you do? I think, man, you've got to be unorthodox. You've got to mm. define yourself. There must be that one thing that separates you from the rest. Mm. They say it's one thing that separates men from boys. So you've got to have that one distinct thing that's for you, that nobody else has, and that can only come from God. And nobody else can give it to you besides God. Mm. So I basically, I mingle with the people. I mm. go to the ordinary members of the ANC, I sit with them, mm. members of the EFF, members mm. of the DA, mm. members of the IFP, members of, of any other political party in the country, and I engage with them. I engage with all young people within these political mm. formations. Mm. And that once you build those relationships with those people, as much as they know you to be a professional, yeah. you can be friendly with them. Mm. But once you are doing your work, you're doing your work and your friendship aside. Mm. So you've got to have that distinction between friendship, between work, and also knowing mm. when not to fall into agendas. Sure. Do your groundwork, because if you do your groundwork and you are with the ordinary branch members of whichever political party, mm. you then know what is happening. If you have a strong contact base, which you touch, which you touch sure. base with, which you can just randomly go out and have coffee with, mm. engage, and then it flows on to political discussions. Sure. People begin to trust you. That's what differentiates you mm. from the rest, and that's my modus operandi. That's how I yeah. do it. I engage with people across the political spectrum, across factions, and that's what God has gifted me with. And where do you get your unapologetic spirit from? Because, like, as I've started doing this, you know, you you, you can actually get scared to ask a question <laughs> sometimes, but when I see you, it's just like. I'm everything that I am today because of my parents. Mm. I'm everything I am politically because of my father, Spongsen Masego. Mm. He taught me everything. He told me to be fearless, go out there, you've got nothing to lose, mm. but only to build your brand and go higher mm. and higher and so like in the Well, you're doing that, bro. You're definitely an asset. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Where they would say I'm a liability. <laughs> SMWX. No young people are around the decision-making table. Let some new voices come to the fore. Follow us on WhatsApp and catch us live Tuesdays and Thursdays. Out with the old, in with the new. SMWX.